Here's your app idea. Here's the app itself. To get from here to here as efficiently as possible, there are six simple steps. Number one, selecting an idea. Number two, validating for market need. Number three, sketching out requirements or features. Number four, deciding to go no code developer or co founder. Number five, testing and launching. Number six, gathering feedback and iterating based on user need. Simple, but not easy. These stages are about taking actions. If you're ready to put in the work, let's start. This video is an overview of how to systematically build an app as a non-technical founder. Systematic doesn't mean you win the race. Systematic means you finish the race. If you don't finish the race, how are you gonna win it? It can take up to four months, maybe more, to go from planning an app to developing and launching it. And watching this 10 minute video is going to be the least tiring part. But I'm here to make your journey as easy as possible. I will provide you with templates and action items to go as far as you can as a non-technical person before you need to involve other people. Let's start with where all apps begin. Stage one, selecting your idea. Objective, find a potentially profitable app idea that is a good match for you. Pause this video right now and make a copy of the stage one template in the description. Fill this in as you are brainstorming. Who am I helping is where we describe our primary audience and their problem. How will I help them is where we describe our solution. There has to be a clear link between the solution proposed to the problem faced by our target audience. Now, see the uniqueness scale you should know how close your idea is to potential competitors. Never be a 100% clone, but being 100% unique isn't ideal. The more unique, the more custom development will probably be needed. The best case is something in the middle. For example, think of the difference between being the first guy to ever build a marketplace app versus today where you can choose from so many existing framework and add your own twist to it. It's always faster and cheaper to renovate instead of building from scratch. Then establish that the problem is either frequent or urgent, preferably both, but never neither. Next, consider your domain expertise. Are you familiar with the industry? Do you have a network of contacts? Is it a big network or is it just your father-in-law and he doesn't even like you? Ah! Domain expertise makes it so much easier. Lastly, are you passionate about solving this problem? It sounds a bit cheesy. Okay, very cheesy, but everyone needs a bit of cheese in their life. The four months may turn into five or six or seven, and if your heart's not in it, what's to stop you from just throwing in the towel halfway? Ideally, you want an app that solves a problem that's frequent or urgent, uses existing app structures, but at a unique twist you have domain expertise in, you are passionate about. How much time should you spend on this? 10 to 30 minutes tops. Get an idea, screen it, and if it doesn't immediately sound good, on to the next one. Ideas come and go all the time. Give it thought, but don't overthink. Stage two, validating market need. Objective, find out if your target audience would actually pay for your solution. Sounds like you've got something, but so far you've only asked yourself and your computer. You need to hear from the very people you intend to help. If you want to help people with disabilities, you need to speak to people with disabilities. If you want to help neurosurgeons, you need to speak to neurosurgeons. That way you can pick the brain, get it? Neurosurgeon, brain? Here's what I don't want you to do. You know those sites where you put up a survey and pay strangers a dollar to answer them? If that's your main way of validating market need, don't be surprised if it translates into zero actual sales. You need to find a way to speak to people one-on-one. -on -one. When you talk to them, cover three things. Screen them. Ask questions that confirm they are your target audience. Understand their problem. Do they really face the issue you want to solve? Determine their commitment level. Ask how much they'll pay for an app-based solution. For number three, I recommend giving options in the form of ranges. 50 to $100 a month, 100 to $150 a month, and so on. Don't add $0 as an option. If it's really $0, they'll tell you. For this stage, don't think about how much time to allocate. Think of how many people to interview. I would say no less than five quality interviewees who validate your theory. Also, get them on a list to be your future product testers saves you the trouble of having to find new people later on. I think you can see why domain expertise and network is a huge help here. Stage three, sketching out requirements and features. Objective, to visualize your app layout and functions. 
and by extension, your user's experience and trim down to essential features. Let me start by showing what you ultimately want to create. This is a combination of a user flow and wireframe. A user flow is a map of the steps users take to achieve goals on an app. It helps us predict user behavior and obstacles they may encounter. A wireframe is a simple black and white sketch of an interface. Understand the user flow and make sure the interface facilitates it. Time to draw. If you're old school, pen and paper will do just fine. If you prefer a device, you can use the template below to sketch on your device. For every crucial feature, you are going to make one of these. Under as a user, I should be able to, I want you to define the specific goal your user must achieve on this screen. Based on that goal, what should the screen look like? What design elements are essential and how should they be arranged to make it intuitive? Since you'll be doing this frequently, I'll suggest a UI design tool like Figma or UIZert. With UIZert in particular, the learning curve is super short and then designing wireframes become a breeze, especially if you start with one of their templates. Once you have everything, time to review and trim the fan. Ask yourself, if my app didn't have this screen or this feature, can my users still solve their problem without struggling? Whenever the answer is yes, burn it on fire. Be ruthless. That's just extra development time and cost. If it comes down to one screen and one button, then it's one screen and one button. That's actually incredible. How many people can say they've got a profitable app with one button? Give yourself a week to finish the wireframe. If you're getting expert help, they'll sit down with you and sort out the details. If you are planning on building it yourself, join an online community and get them to have a look and give feedback. Stage four, deciding to go no code, developer or co-founder. Objective, to decide on the best way to begin MVP development. Remember your interviewees in stage two? You want to call them back and show them the proposed solution as a usable interactive experience. To me, that means giving them an app to try out. If you have done stage three right, it's time to start development and bring your wireframe to life as a minimum viable product. If you don't know how to code, you have three practical choices. Use a no-code app builder to build the app yourself. Hire a development agency like me or a freelancer. Find a technical co-founder who's willing to work for part ownership. If you're limited by budget but not time, wait for a technical co-founder. If you're limited by time but not budget, hire an agency or a freelancer. If you're limited by time and budget, go with a no-code app builder. Whichever you decide on, it's time to start building. Give it 12 to 16 weeks for the first iteration of your MVP to be ready for public eyes. That's more of a general estimate. If you or your developer think it's ready before 12 weeks, go for it. Let me say this. The next few weeks will be tough whichever option you choose. Expect to run into unavoidable delays or changes to plan. Your wife might leave you. Your friends might complain that you don't shower anymore. You might even catch your dog playing fetch with another man. Okay, it won't be that hard but it won't be easy. This is where passion comes in to keep you going. Just remember your interviewees whose lives you are going to impact for the better. A lot of boring math later. Stage five, testing and launching. Objective, to ensure all functions and features of the MVP work as intended and to launch the MVP on App Source. By now, you have a prototype that's almost ready, almost. We just need to go over it with a magnifying glass to test features and the flow of the app. First off, unless you're developing the app yourself, you should be the primary tester. Whatever your developer or co-founder releases or updates, test the shit out of it. When you're satisfied, time to call those interviewees and have them test your app. If all goes well, they're going to be super excited that the conversation about their problems has led to an actual product made for them. Those will be your first few customers. If this is your first time, repeat after me. There is no such thing as bug-free software. Developers and bugs are locked in in an everlasting game of cat and mouse. This is true for any app. We just make sure the user experience is unaffected. Expect testing to take about two to four weeks. After that, we submit the app for Google and Apple to review. Whatever the launch date, submit your app for review at least two weeks beforehand. If there's anything that needs fixing, there's time to do it without the risk of missing the launch date, touch wood. Hey, if you found this video so far to be helpful, please subscribe and leave a comment asking me anything you would like to know about mobile and web app development. Back to Adrian with stage six. 
Thank you, Adrian. And now on to stage six, gathering feedback and iterating. Objective, to fix bugs and make changes to the MVP based on genuine user feedback. By now, your app is live on Google and Apple's app stores and any of the other app stores you might want to be on. There's a lot of them, by the way. Maybe I'll do a video covering them. This is it, the first iteration of your app ready to serve its first batch of real life users. I mentioned that you can't let bugs get under your skin. You've tested the app for bugs, the interviewees tested the app for bugs, but you haven't caught them all and new users will let you know. Keep an eye out on incoming reviews on your app store pages. You should also have a pop-up in your app that asks for feedback. Listen to what users say and decide how to address them. You don't want to say yes to everything, you can't afford to. Obviously, if screens are crashing, fix them. But if users are complaining about a missing feature, it's a gray area. Implementing it means more development costs, maybe higher maintenance too. Does the cost justify the return you get? It's your call. But I don't think you should decide alone. It's good to have a co-founder or developer to talk to. If you've gone the no-code way, time to ask that online community of non-tech founders. Get a second opinion from them on how to move forward but of course, the choice is yours to make. This stage of feedback and iteration lasts the lifetime of your app. There will always be new bugs. Users will always want new features. Eventually, you'll be a pro at dealing with both. Let me help you out with stage five. No code, hire or find a co-founder. I'm sorry, can't say I've got enough experience to definitively advise on finding a co-founder. I will say that Sean Red, who co-founded Tinder, met his technical co-founder when he was working at a startup incubator called Hatch during one of their hackathons. So check for tech incubators or hackathons close to you because being in the right place at the right time is a good way to meet the right person. If you want to go no code, check out my video discussing the best no code app builders for non-technical founders. If you want to hire, check out my video discussing how to recognize good developers when you meet them. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Leave a comment, subscribe, like this video, all that good stuff. And I will see you in one of those videos.